Hi there, welcome to yet another episode of the National Debates here at the Debate Circle. I'll be your host, Waya Jeffrey. Now, in the meeting between these two teams, the main agenda is whether gender plays a key role when it comes to savings and investments in Kenya. The motion under dissection states, gender is a determinant of the savings and investments culture in Kenya. Proposing this motion, we have St. Mary's Igoji Girls, and opposing this motion, we have Ogande Girls High School. All the best to the two teams on stage. First speaker team proposition, you have three minutes. Wise man once said that a blind man cannot guide the other, but I guess he was not wise enough because here I see three blind girls guiding each other, claiming that gender is not a determinant in the saving and investment culture of our country, Kenya. I am Marewako from St. Mary's Girls High School, Igoji. First, let me begin with the definition of terms. What is gender? According to Oxford Dictionary, gender is the state of being a female or a male. And according to Cambridge Dictionary, saving is the act of keeping money aside for future use. According to, according to Investopedia.com, invest, investment is the asset of building up wealth from the hard-earned income. And according to Encyclopedia.com, encyclopedia culture is the way of life of the people. And I think this motion that gender being a determinant in the saving and investment culture of our country, Kenya, will be held by the SDG 5, which defines gender equality. Men are, on to my first point, men are better educated on the formal financial services than the women. According to Statista.com, 86% 86 of, 86 of men have access to these formal financial services, unlike the women who have 80% of these financial, financial, formal financial services. Where has the six percentage gone if it has not gone to the gender inequality? If these women and men are not taken equally, 8% of women have access to informal financial services. These are the charmers and the merry-go-rounds. 4% of men have access to these informal financial services. And according to www.sociologygroup.com, these informal financial services are not a stable source of income. And they are of high charges. And so why should, we why should we depend on something that is of high chances, that, that is of high charges? Whereas we can depend on these formal financial services such as the banks, where we can be taught on how to save, where we can be taught on how to invest so that we can have a better future for ourselves. On to my second point, the cultural practices. According to World Bank Organization, the women are the ones who are majorly affected by this unhealthy cultural practices such as the FGM, the early marriages, and pregnancy at tender age. For a very good example, a very good example is the early marriage. If the girl is married at an early age, the girl will definitely be cut off from her education. And if she's cut off from her education, definitely she'll, she'll end up seeking a hand-to-mouth job. Seeking a hand-to-mouth job, what will she save? What will she invest? Definitely nothing. And nothing and nothing at all. While on the other hand, we see the boy who is at school building a brighter future for himself. Even if we look for beauty, we can't look for beauty with no brains. An empty woman is nothing. On to my third point. As a woman, I have necessities. I need sanitary towels. I need, not, I, I need inner garments. Not one, not two. And unlike the man who can survive on one box or even two. According to the National Bureau of Statistics, the NBS, 48.2% of women have, 48% of women, 48.2% of women tend to spend almost 26.5% of their salary on themselves. While there is the man who can save and invest more. So, aren't you seeing some senses and having my work done as Madam Facts? Hope I have knocked some senses into you. Then you can slide into our DMs because we know what we're serving. <laughs> First speaker team opposition, you have three minutes. Despite gender differences, we are all equal. Life is a conspiracy allotting a predetermined gear towards our endeavors, dictating whom to lead and whom to be led. Let me ask, uh, let me ask you a question. Do you live for yourself or for others? My name is Valentin Komboka from Uganda, Uganda Girls High School. Here to strongly oppose the motion that says, gender is a great determinant of savings and investment culture in Kenya. To begin with, let me define the key terms of the motion. Gender. Gender is the state of being a male or a female. Then saving. 
Saving is the amount of money that you, no, you do not need to use. Investment. Investment is the act of giving time or effort to a particular task in order to make it successful. Okay, to my first proposal. You say that we are being blindfolded. Let me tell you something. We, we have both the male and the female gender. If you say that we are being blindfolded, that the female gender, look at the male gender. If you say that female gender is the one which is, is degraded in the savings and investment culture, you, you are defiling the female that. The men, the male, the male, sorry, the male, the male, if they are the ones who are given the priority to save and invest, it will bring male chauvinism. On the other side, the female will, will see themselves superior compared to the female. To my first point, gender roles and responsibilities. You see, in Kenya, gender roles are evolving. With more women pursuing education and entering the workforce. It's in the world we're living in. We're, we're living in the 21st century. Don't you agree? In the century that we're in, more women are entering the workforce such that women are now given the chance. Women are given the chance compared to the past while women were not, were not regarded. Simply because, you can see for instance, we have Orpha Winfrey. Orpha Winfrey is a good example of a woman who is investing and saving in Kenya. Well, gender does have some influence on the savings and investment culture in Kenya. I would like to tell my opponents, we need to consider other crucial factors such as education, simply because it does not mean that if, if the men are the only ones who are having education, the women are the ones who act as caregivers, simply because nowadays women are also regarded simply because they are also into the workforce. Because now you can find that a woman is out there also looking for the household on how to take care of the household finance, meaning that the men and the women now have the opportunity to enter the workforce. This giving them a good chance to take part in the investment and saving in Kenya. I want to urge you to join hands with me to enlighten my proposals that we are supposed to, sup we are supposed to oppose the motion that says Gender is a great determinant of savings and investment culture in Kenya. And with that, I rest my case. Thank you. My name is Tamika Howie from St. Mary Sigoji. And she talked about saving money you don't need. She talked about the definition of saving as being money that you don't use to use. Why would you save if you don't need to use that money? I thought that saving is all about you save and then you use it for something better in the future. She also said that we are being biased when it comes to both genders. That when we're talking about women in the, um, when we're talking about cultural practices, that we are putting men as more, we are priori prioritizing men more than the women. But that is not the case. She just stated that in most cases, both of the genders contribute to the investment culture of the country in different ways. And I think you're not actually familiar with the motion because the motion wants us to show your motion. You're supposed to show that gender is not the only determinant, that there are other determiners that can bring investment culture of Kenya, but you're actually coming to the proposing side. According to Bing.com, we talk about extravagancy. I'm a lady. I need good shoes. I need good clothes. I need cosmetics. I need to enhance my appearance more to the outside people. And this is where you come to find that women are more extravagant than men in this case, meaning both of them actually contribute to the investment culture, to the saving and investment culture of the country in different ways. The women will actually, when they are buying or purchasing all these good things that they need to have, they, they find themselves investing into the economy of Kenya, which has led to great investment rates. And while the men, in this other case, while the women are purchasing all these other things, the, the men are actually exploring more into the business. They are, mo they are more of investing, more of getting good returns, interest, in short, and they are able to actually contribute to the investment culture of the country. Um, we come to my other second point, which is 
according to Statista.com, in contribution to capital wealth. We see that contribution in capital wealth is determined by the investing rates in the country. When women account for 38% of the commonwealth, the men account for 62% of the commonwealth. This has brought very strong gender inequality earnings leading to losses in wealth. This shows us that gender inequality has been a great thing that has been pulling down investment culture in Kenya. Gender inequality is showing a gap in the capital wealth contribution. And this is actually bringing us, it's leading greatly into the investment rates in the country. If the gap is not reduced, then if the gap is that big, then that means there's no saving and, and investment in Kenya. But we see that the gap is not that great because both of them are contributing into this investment culture. As according to According to Bing.com, we see that um, difference in population, there's a difference in population. I mean, include.co.ke confirms that in 2021, the female population amounted to 26.73 million, while in males, it contributed to 26.28 million. If the numbers have changed, females still continue to save more than men, but they actually contribute in different ways. Yeah. Thank you. Second speaker team opposition, you have three minutes. What my fellow actually meant by the term saving is that it's the money you keep and you don't need to use actually at the same time. And uh, you talked about a gap existing. Actually, in the era we are living in right now, it is same work, same pay. There is no gap actually existing. It is an oversimplification to claim that gender actually determi determines one saving and investment culture. I'm Joy Ojal from the Great Ogande Girls, ready to oppose the motion which states that gender is a great determinant of savings and investment culture in Kenya. I have this neighbor of mine. She sells gideri at the. She used to sell gideri at the market. So, when she was, she usually save it during the market days. She used to save a thousand shillings for 15 years. And uh, picture this. She wanted to build a house. She didn't have a house. She wanted to build a house. And this brings me to my point, which is individual agency. Individuals possess agency and can make financial decisions based on their personal goals irrespective of gender. Now, saving and investment can be determined by one's goals perspective. Take an example with my neighbor. She had a goal of actually building a house, and this wasn't determined by gender, or was it? She had a goal of building a house. Now, saving the little amount of money that she had, this ma helped her to manage, build the house that she wanted. Now, we all know that uh, the era that we live in, the cultural norms are not actually upheld. One has the choice to make a decision of whether to follow the cultural norms or not. The cultural norm actually is that men are considered to be financially educated more than women. Actually, women are more, are uh, right now, they are also financially educated. It doesn't mean that only men are exposed to financial education. Now, I was talking about the era that you are living in right now. The female and the men are, equal, are equally earning according to the work they do. Now, take an example with uh, our to-be Deputy President Martha Karua. She made a choice. She defied the cultural norms. She invested, and actually, she was about to become the Deputy President of Kenya. She's an example of a woman who is investing and is saving. She invested in the campaigns. And uh, this, the, the, the fact that she defied the cultural norms and left her husband doesn't isn't stopping her in any way, or is it? Now, help me open the eyes of our proposers who are saying that gender is a great determinant of savings and investment culture. Help me tell them that there are other factors that can determine whether someone can save or invest. For example, individual agency. The agency of you requiring that money will help you determine whether you can save or not. The second opposer actually talked about herself 
that she has a once she has to wear inner garments. Yes, you have to wear inner garments, but it doesn't mean that you are going to use all your money to buy your inner garments. You need to consider other things like individual agency. You buying your inner garments doesn't mean that you have a goal in life. So help me and join me on the opposing team and help me enlighten them that gender isn't a great determinant of savings and investment culture in Kenya. Thank you. Position, you have three minutes. The story that is going on and on is that gender is not, gender is. My name is Patience Kasele from the great St. Mary's Girl Sigoji, and I'm here to prove that gender is indeed a determinant of the savings and investments culture. So the second opposers, the second opposer, yes, you spoke about individual agencies. In this current century that you're living in, there is the rate of inflation. Inflation is the rise of the, of the prices of commodities. How much is she selling Hagideri at the moment? How much is she saving? Well, she has needs. The first opposer is actually speaking about the inner garments because she said that 26.5% of women spend their salaries on it. Well, men, they do it less. So you can't basically tell me that I need to join your side. Well, yet you are not actually familiarizing yourself with the motion. Please do that. Uh, you also spoke about same work, same pay, thus no gap. Apparently, there is a gap. According to dailynation.co.ke, 68,500 women do lose their jobs at 2013. And 168,500 men lose their jobs. That is still the exact same year at 2013. Where am I driving my point? I'm trying to say that if these men are losing their jobs at a higher rate than women, what are, going to, what are they going to save? You don't save what you don't have. You save what you have. So this point on the same work and same pay, thus no gap, is actually not, uh, I lack words to speak. You, the first speaker spoke about the gender roles and responsibilities. You are actually not familiar with the motion and your research seemed to be shady. I will go on to my first point about financial literacy. Women don't actually know about this financial literacy and they'll ask me how. And this is because according to the worldbank.com, males are, are, very fine, are very familiar with this, with this saving, with this investment as they come at 85%. What about the women? The women come at slightly 78.2%. So if these women are lagging behind when it comes to saving, gender is still determining how they're going to save. Also, when it comes to their career biasness, women tend to gain more jobs than men. And you'll ask me how. Well, this woman goes for a job interview. This woman is told by this male person, I'll lie with you, I'll sleep with you, and I'll give you the job. So the woman, due to desperate measures and due to the prevailing economic conditions that is quite noticeable to all citizens, will do it. So this means that this man has nothing to offer. This man has nothing to give to that, uh, to that interviewer who is going to like sell him, I'll give you this job. So if these people do lack their own, if these people do lack how to save, then, no, sorry. If these people, this male and this male lacks the cash to save, then there will be no investment thus. Gender is going to determine how they are going to save and invest. Thank you. <laughs> Third speaker team opposition, you have three minutes. For the first proposal, you actually said that when women are married, they won't be able to finish their education. Thank you for proving my point that education is a major factor in the savings and investment culture in Kenya. Despite our genders, we are all equal. I'm Melanie Juma from the Heart of Uganda Girls. Here to strongly oppose the motion that states gender is a great determinant for the savings and investment culture in Kenya. Why am I saying this? Other factors actually affect the savings and investment culture in Kenya more than gender actually does. One of these factors, some of these factors are the socioeconomic factors. Let me just tell you some of the socioeconomic factors. We have education, level of income, and the and employment opportunities. To my first point, level of income. Level of income actually determines whether a person gets to save or not. Let's take an example, the software engineers. 
software engineers actually for the juniors they actually earn at least 80,000 at least 80,000 and tell you what in Kenya we have both female and male software engineers other people actually other jobs we have cobblers other workers now you tell me how much does a cobbler earn you know, in our school, we have some cobblers, and they made shoes at 100 shillings. Tell me, compare. It's 80,000 and 100 shillings. Who will save? Level of income determines whether a person gets to save or not. Secondly, education. We are, in this hall, we have both ma male and female, right? And we are all going to school. That's why we are here. And isn't that right? You cannot compare what we, uh, the amount of money we'll be, we will be able to save in future with that of those children out there in, in the streets. In schools, we will actually learn. We are actually learning on how to save and invest. So the knowledge we get, we'll actually be able to use it in the savings and investment culture in Kenya. And to my proposer, who's my proposer who said women actually save less because of their inner, they have inner garments, let me tell you a story of mine. When uh, I was in grade six, my parents decided to save so that I could go to my dream high school because my, my performance were really promising. And you know what happened when I did my KCP? Let me just tell you. My parents both saved, and now I'm in my dream school, Organdi Girls High School. And to prove this to you, I'm standing wearing this brown uniform. So I can actually tell you that gender is a great determinant for the savings and investment culture in Kenya. So actually join me in opposing this motion and we will be able to build a future for Kenya where there's equality and everybody is actually able to save. With that, I rest my case. Thank you. Team proposition, you have one minute for your final submission. I heard one day someone saying that noisy gongs do make the loudest noise, but apparently I won't relate. So you spoke about the socioeconomic factors, you spoke about the level of income, you spoke about job opportunities, and you spoke about education. What job opportunities are you saying where there's an increase of unemployment rate from 2% to 3.8% on 2023? You also spoke about education giving us um, the bright light of us being able to save and invest. Well, yet... The uh, members of parliament, the people who are earning, still do not enforce the true third gender rule, and yet they were educated. Are you really shown what you're saying? You spoke about the level of income. I want to tell you that, yes, the level in of income, you, you didn't even expound on that fact. You just stated, and I would like to ask you, how does it determine? So, we listen, we argue, and we convince. As the proposition side, our mindset still remain firm. Our mindset still remain unshaken and still propose the motion that states gender is a determinant of the savings and investments culture in Kenya. Thank you. Team opposition, you have one minute for your final submission. According to SGD number five, which is gender equality, right now both male and female are earning and saving at the same rate. Take an example with our judge right here. She's employed, she's earning, she's investing. Now, our opposition team is telling us that we should consider gender as a determinant of savings and investment culture in Kenya. But I still stand by opposing this motion. Why am I saying this? Once agency of earning determines whether she can save or invest. Once agency of earning, for example, you need something very urgently. You will it, this will determine whether you can save or invest. Now. You talked about that. You are talking about that. You don't understand the motion. Then why are we talking? Why are we opposing the motion? You say that education is not a factor. Actually, it is a factor because right now both male and female are educated financially and they're investing and saving at the same time. You're talking about that. She talked about job opportunities. Actually, she just stated job opportunities. She didn't explain. And this help me to the opposing team by saying that gender isn't a great determinant of savings and investment culture in Kenya. Thank you.
as debaters, can we avoid sounding like we are insulting each other? When Ware says, I see three blind girls, you're hitting them below the belt. Please don't do that. Uh, but of course, uh, Ware, there is some passion and conviction in you, but I want you to work on your coherence of argument. Some of your points were not really well tied to the motion. You had some several points, but there was no clear coherence on how well they're linked to the motion. Tamika, you give good guidance to the first opposer on what she's supposed to do. You're a passionate debater. You try to bring in some statistics. It's important you give sources so that uh, you, you, you tried to bring statistics and some sources were fairly well brought out. So you could have just done more justice by being a little bit more detailed in your presentation of points. Patience, a passionate debater, uh, you try to bring in, uh, as I said, energy to the motion, but I wish you could have equally done more research as guided by Judge Lois and I. From Uganda girls who were opposing the motion, we expected to hear, and Valentine brought up that well, gender roles are changing. So now there's more focus on the empowerment of the girl you know, making sure that the girl has access to education, but is still pulled by these other factors that we have that are cash flow and so on and so forth. Then you said of same work, same pay. Hmm. Yes, on paper, but really in practice, is that what actually happens? But Joy had a really fantastic start, and you brought the issue of individual agency. They get very women, woman, but I was comparing that to a banker sitting somewhere who is a man, and how much can the dairy woman actually save? Does she know even of the shares to buy, or bonds, or those opportunities for investments? Maybe not. Then Melanie, is it Melanie? Yeah. She brought in now the other ideas that are actually expected, the level of income, education, employment opportunities. I think I expected to also hear things of women not being as or rather, men being more aggressive. You know, what is the level of aggressiveness of women? You know, also, if you flip the other coin and say, the responsibility for provision in the household rests with who? Largely, the man, but that is also changing. We have very many households that have single mothers, for example, who are carrying that burden. So ideally, we, we really wanted to hear more of that, but what was lacking is that enthusiasm, that mumph was not coming out. Uh, we expect to see better. May the best team win. And the scores are out. The judges have awarded Ogande Girls High School with 61% a round of applause. The judges have awarded St. Mary's Igoji High with 62% a round of applause. Therefore, this makes St. Mary's Igoji the winners of this debate. Remember to get more of our content. Follow us on all our social media platforms at The Debate Circle on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, and on Threads. For now, it's bye-bye from us.